Honestly, I don't know what happens more. Do I come on here and complain about professional wrestling? Or do many of you uh, come on here and overrate certain things about today's professional wrestling? I don't know. To me, it's kind of a push. Maybe I would lean a little bit more towards me complaining about things slightly more than a lot of you overrate a lot of things. But if there is a difference, it's not that much. I'm sorry. That's the way I see it. The way I see it. And sometimes I feel like I have to come on here kind of as like that WTF advisor. Like, what the fuck are people thinking? What the fuck are people seeing? I don't get it. You know, maybe I'm there to provide a reality check. Maybe I'm there to provide a balance. I don't know. Maybe I'm just there to live in my own little egomaniacal universe. That could be too. But I see this recent phenomenon that is creeping in that I didn't think I would ever see. And that is now I'm starting to see segments of the hardcore WWE or hardcore wrestling fan base embrace John Cena matches to the point where they are overrating John Cena and his matches. The people that take the in-ring work the most seriously now are singing the praises of, of all people, John Felix Anthony Cena. If this isn't the ultimate, like, what the fuck moment to me as a wrestling fan, I don't know what the hell is. Now, let me set the table here by going over this. What to me makes a good match. Now, granted, for some, there are different elements that make a good match. For others, there are different things that make a good match. Maybe it's an even longer laundry list than mine, a shorter list, a more narrow-minded in scope list. Uh, for some, it's just about the athleticism and the spots and the moves, and that's it. And we know that's true. So here's what I think personally, to me, anyways, to me, even though I do think a generalist kind of should be what makes a good match. This is, to me, what makes a good wrestling match for me. A match that features interesting characters that hopefully, doesn't always have to, but hopefully and preferably would have some type of interesting story, angle, or hook heading into it. Now, sometimes you could have random matches that end up being phenomenal because of what is done during and throughout the match. That is true. I'm just saying from my standpoint, I would prefer to have some type of interesting story or angle or hook heading into it. I love to see a match that is well executed. You can do 100 moves, and if they're all well executed, they're very crisp, great. But if you only do five things, but you do them really, really, really well and execute them perfectly at the right time, at the right place, in the right way for the right reason, that works just as fine, if not in some ways even better. But it has to be well executed. I think it's important to have a match that fits the characters and as tying into that a match that tells the right story, in particular for the characters that are involved. If you have 280-pound guys trying to work like their Hulk Hogan in The Ultimate Warrior, that doesn't work. If you have The Big Show and Kane trying to work like their Daniel Bryan or, let's say, Adolph Ziggler, that also is not going to work. The match has to make sense for the characters, and they have to be able to tell the right story both for the characters and for what needs to happen in the actual match itself. To me, professional wrestling is a morality play. It's about storytelling, just like many other forms of entertainment are. you got to have some type of story in there because there has to be something to be able, in my opinion, to hook you in. To me, a match where everybody's just spotting and flipping and kicking all over the place doesn't equate to a good story. It most certainly doesn't equate to a good match. If I just wanted to see that, I could watch a bunch of guys do a bunch of crazy, insane shit for no money on the backyard circuit, and that's pretty much the same damn thing that... What I see a lot in professional wrestling now. And as you go through that match and you have the characters do what they're supposed to do and tell the right type of story for that type of match for those characters, the match that has a correct finish, and a finish especially importantly that is properly timed and is very well executed and works for the match and the story and the characters. It doesn't always have to be a clean, decisive, you know, straight-up finish. It does not. 
but it needs to be the right finish done at the right time in the right way for the right reason. That That's in my opinion. To me, if you have a match that you think is really, really good for 15 minutes, but the last five minutes disappoint you and the finish is total shit, a good match that is not. We don't sit there, I don't think, usually and go to a movie and say, hey, the first hour was pretty good, the last 40 minutes was pretty bad, and the ending was stupid, but that was still a good movie. No, you go away from it saying that movie sucked, the finish was stupid, and it pretty much glosses over everything else. I would like a match to have some type of appropriate impact for one or both of the characters with the appropriate follow-up or any type of follow-up at all. It's not necessary, like mandated, but it would be nice. But I think ultimately, above all else, a great wrestling match should be able to get you to ultimately suspend your disbelief. Forget that it's big. Forget that it's scripted. Before, Forget that the finishes are predetermined. Forget even that you damn good and well know who's probably going to win going into it. It gets you sucked in. It hooks you in. And when I watch John Cena matches, as so often is the case, I see most of these traits and characteristics not evident in any way, shape, or form. This is usually what you get out of John Cena matches, and you're still getting them. So it blows my ever-loving mind why so many people now all of a sudden are talking about how great Cena's ring work is in 2015 and using this now as a defense mechanism for John Cena and his freaking spot. His character is not interesting. His open challenge basically is nothing more than a bunch of matches that are just more filler on the show like so many other things on Raw every single week are filler. They're matches with no real purpose or story heading into it. You know, they, they just aren't. And when we want to talk about matches that are well executed, most of Cena's matches are not. They're in the minority. His botches, his terrible execution, especially at this stage of the game, as long as he's been doing it, is absolutely inexcusable. You would think, instead of trying to expand his repertoire with that abortion of a freaking springboard stunner, after all of these years, this guy would fucking learn how to apply his submission finish correctly. He would learn how to do this move correctly and that move correctly, and do I need to go on? Does it need to be perfect every time? No. But it actually needs to look legit. It actually needs to look like the guy trying to pull off the move maneuver and executing the maneuver knows what the fuck he's doing. And so often, time after time after time, so much of what Cena look, does in the ring looks like shit. Complete and total shit. These botchy, clunky spot fest with, again botchy, clunky spots that are poorly executed absolutely tell no story at all. It's just we're going to cram in a spot, we're going to cram this in, we're going to do this, we're going to fool the fucking people, and there you go. All the while, you know how this shit is going to finish. Cena always wins, and typically in some type of bullshit, awkwardly timed type of manner. There is no rhythm, rhyme, or reason. There is no story. He's supposed to be the hero, yet he works like the villain. Yet he's supposed to be the face, yet he is the heel. And yet he comes out on top all the fucking time, and people are supposed to be excited about this. I mean, holy Christ, it's always the same old shit. It's LOL, Cena wins, we feed somebody else to the John Cena monster. Good luck, Junior, on whatever happens in your future endeavors. I don't even need to go through the names. And when it comes to suspending disbelief, if you never believe Cena's going to lose, how is that good? How are you suspending your disbelief? You would think, if anything, you would want something to make you forget. You would want something that totally engages you and sucks you in. And I don't care how many damn spots something like Cena versus Cesaro has on a Raw, you know damn good and well that Cesaro is not beating Cena for the freaking U.S. title. So it's like so many other things on today's WWE programming. It feels like, what, ladies and germs, a fucking waste of time. And how can something be good if you go into it knowing that it is a waste of time and you ultimately feel like it wastes your time, no matter how much you try to convince yourself of anything else? I mean, think about it. We're talking about how good Cena's work is in the ring, even though the whole concept of work rate is completely fucking ridiculous, and a lot of people don't even understand what that term even freaking means, especially the people now in this damn wrestling business. Just because you're doing piss 
poor springboard stunners does not mean all of a sudden that makes you a good worker. That doesn't make you a good storyteller. It makes you look like a buffoon. You're supposed to be the best. You're supposed to be the top guy. You would think at some point in time, after so many years of practicing and plying his crap, that the guy would get fucking better at doing his stuff. And while you could sit there and say in some of these cases that it takes more than one, it takes two to tangle and make the moves work, and that's somewhat true, Cena always seems to botch his part. And again, I emphasize, just like we'll shit on Sting for so many years, especially in his TNA run, where he couldn't execute his own finishing submission maneuver <laughs> in the right way. Cena for years has never learned how to properly apply the STF. And yet now here we are sitting here in 2015 after all these years of this same old shit. And now we've turned to praising John Cena and his freaking matches. All the while knowing that the guy's always going to win. His matches are botchy. They're clunky. They're poorly executed. They don't tell a story. I mean, here's the simple truth. It's gotten that bad. North American professional wrestling has gotten that bad. In particular, the WWE product has gotten that bad. To the point where people are now praising John Cena matches. That's how bad this shit has gotten. And for those people that continue to watch WWE that are looking for reasons to justify why they continue to watch it, this is what they've turned to. Because what in the hell else did they have? I mean, seriously, thinking about it, it's gotten that bad, people, where many of you are now praising John Cena's matches and praising his ring work, even though you know deep down inside it's a waste of time, even though you know his asset always comes out on top, even though you know that the people that he's working with are only being served up to help out John Cena, and even though you know that his matches are botchy, that he can't execute half of the damn moves he does, that they're poorly pieced together, they don't tell a fucking story. It's gotten that bad. It's the same old Cena shit. Just maybe slightly changed in a different way, but it's ultimately the same shit. It's a character that is <laughs> not interesting at all, that really frankly, doesn't have many in terms of any redeeming qualities whatsoever. And all we end up doing is wasting a bunch of time to get to the same freaking result. LOL, Cena wins. The WWE is fooling you. And you should be smart enough at this point in time to be able to see through this bullshit. But credit to the WWE and frankly, shame on a lot of you for buying into this bullshit and getting sucked into this. It has gotten so bad and you have so little else to look forward to that the WWE has taken some of these other people and thrown them at Cena to help Cena protect himself, help Cena look good, and you're buying into it. You're signing off on it. You're helping feed the Cena monster like it needs to be freaking fed anymore. These spot fests don't equal good matches, in my opinion. Poorly executed moves with awkward feeling finishes to cap off matches that don't tell a story most certainly don't equal to good matches. And at the end of the day, what is this to me? This new phenomenon of so many people now amongst the hardcore fan community praising John Cena and his freaking matches and his ring work? To me, it's the ultimate example of John Cena fatigue. It's that ultimate realization of so many years of bitching about the guy and complaining about the guy and pissing about the guy and moaning about the guy. People have reached their breaking point. And they don't feel strongly enough about their dislike for John Cena and what WWE does with him and what he represents to turn away from the product. So now again, as I've referenced before, people are looking for justifications to continue to watch the WWE product. And this is one of those justifications that's being presented to them on a silver platter or a green platter or a purple platter or a red platter, whatever the fucking color of the month is for this ass hat every single week. I mean, it is the ultimate example of John Cena fatigue. I see this amongst fellow Chicago Bear fans. They know after six years that Jay Cutler sucks. They know that he's a turd. They know that he's not a winner. They know he's not a franchise quarterback. Yet they've gotten so tired of him and so tired of complaining about him and so tired of focusing on the negatives with the guy that they aren't going to stop watching the Bears. They're not going to stop supporting the Bears. So now they become complicit to the Jay Cutler problem and 
they try to glare over those deficiencies and they try to ignore them and not talk about them, pretend that they're not there. They try to create an alternate Jay Cutler Chicago Bear fans type of bubble because whatever choice do they really have? They really don't have it. It feels very similar here with John Cena and the WWE. For many of you, it's a ritual, it's a habit, it's a pattern, it's a big part of your life for so many years, as it has been for me for almost 30 years now. It has been 30 years now. It's not easy to give up. I understand. And frankly, I do what a lot of you are doing, whether you'll want to admit it to yourself or others or not. You're looking for justifications as to why you still watch this shit. And I'm looking for justifications each and every single week. I'm not different or unique compared to any of you, and you most certainly are not fooling me by trying to sit there and say that this product is great because you know damn good and well it's not. The bottom line is, is that you're letting the WWE win. After so many years of trying to put up the good fight, you guys have had enough. That whole never give up, well, the WWE and Cena most certainly have never give up. given up. It, it seems like many of you now are giving up. Don't buy into this crap. Don't believe this bullshit. Don't fall victim to John Cena fatigue to the point where you're using him as a justification for why you continue to watch. Don't fool yourself. Don't trick yourself. Don't lie to yourself. You know these matches aren't good. Just be honest with yourself and cut it out. Because now as you're feeding into it, the WWE is seeing it and they're going to be believing it. And instead of solving the problems, people, you're only making them worse.